bring the meeting to order. Are there any changes or additions to the agenda as presented? Yes, I've got two uh, changes. Uh, our uh, request that we make the appointments or reappointments to the CUD at this meeting uh, and um, give the board an update on uh, emergency, our local emergency operations procedure. Uh, and the plan that we're required to submit annually. Is there any board members who have anything additional they would like to add or changes? Okay, not seeing any. Is the board prepared to approve the meeting minutes of April 5th? So moved. A motion, do we have a second? Second. Motion second, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, I saw Rosemary. You're up, Rosemary. Okay, on the budget status report, to date we're spent at 60.4%. And we're just starting to get the bills in for any uh, mud issues we might have had. So I think overall we're in very good shape for this year. Good. No surprises? No, not yet. <laughs> of course, there are big expenses, the paving and such. We haven't processed those yet. So we'll be getting close to that 90% soon. Okay. And on current taxes, we're slightly ahead of the previous two years for our total collection. We're at 79.85%. And our last installment is due May 10th. Okay. And I sent you a list of delinquent taxes for last year. Currently, we still have almost $48,000 that's uncollected. And I have um, downtown pizzerias liquor license for 2021. There hasn't been any changes from last year's application. Okay. And that would require all board members' signatures, right? Majority, at least three. A majority, yeah. Uh, I guess I'd ask what the board's pleasure here is. Typically, we approve uh, liquor license applications and we submit a, a form letter with each one that the board's been doing for numerous years that basically we reserve the right to uh, suspend their license if they're caught in violation of any liquor control laws. And the reason we started doing that some number of years ago is we do not have the ability to levy a fine uh, like the state does. And the state will usually give the owners an option of some token amount of a fine or uh, like a 15 day suspension. Well, the, we were finding, this was a number of years ago, that stores were just paying the fine because uh, they could make up that loss of revenue in just a couple of nights in their liquor sales. And that was costing them, it was a lot more costly if they took the suspension. And to put a little teeth into it, we've always uh, reserved our right uh, to suspend the license, which we have a right to do. We just do not have a right to levy any fines. So with that, uh, I would look for what's the board's pleasure on this. So I'll move with the usual letter. We have a motion, do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and second. Any discussion? Yeah. Um, yeah. I thought. Sorry. Go ahead, Matt. No, you you first. I thought we already approved downtown on March third or fifth or something. Oh, that was last year, the 2020. Oh, it was 2020. Okay, and it goes to the third. Okay, I gotcha. Okay, thank you. Matt, nah. just occurs to me that in my uh, time here, uh, we've talked about this letter a lot, and I you know I've approved sending out quite a few, and I've never seen the letter. 
<laughs> so if uh, Rosemary or Brian, if you have a copy of that letter and you could uh, send it to my email, uh, I think uh, I'd just love to see it. Sure. Sure. Thanks. If you can send it to all of us, that would be great. Yeah, please send it to the yeah. full board. <laughs> no, just send it to me. <laughs> <laughs> Any I think I've already seen that letter, Nat. Where are you been, anyway? <laughs> You're much more. You pay, you pay better attention than I do. <laughs> Any further discussion? And this will require at least a majority of us to go into the office and sign. And uh, so I guess I will also ask, uh, typically we've been having the chair go in and sign the orders, but if we all got to go in to sign this uh, liquor license, you might as well all sign the orders as well. Then we all take responsibility instead of you, right? That's right. We all go to jail. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Ayes have it. Please stop uh, by in the next few days. Yes, because uh, this, their current year ends on the 30th of April. Okay. The state needs a few days to process it. I got a question for Rosemary while she's still online here. Yep, go ahead, Mike. Uh, Rosemary, are, are you going to wait till, you know, the governor is talking about maybe opening things up after the 4th of July. So if that be the case, will uh, you have a tax sale, uh, like a normal tax sale uh, shortly thereafter? Is that yes. what your plan is? Yes, once the governor opens everything, everything up again. Okay, we'll very good. Up. Thank you. You got anything else, Rosemary? Um, I have a question about delinquencies. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. How how often do we reach out for collections? Like there were some pretty small amounts on that list for individuals, and I cannot imagine that a few of those folks wouldn't just pay them. They're sent um, statements every month until they're turned over to the tax collector. Then she sends them. But we, the board a few years ago approved that we wouldn't set putting anybody to tax sale less than six hundred dollars. Okay. And we don't ever write off. We do. We occasionally we do. do. Occasionally for trailers that have left Johnson or. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Anything else, Rosemary? That's all. Thanks, Rosemary. Any further questions for Rosemary? If not, thank you, Rosemary. Have Welcome. a nice evening. Oh, Stick yeah. Around. <laughs> uh, Hugh, you up. Hey, everybody. How's it evening. Going? <clears throat> All right. Um, let's start with my report. We completed the projects on Plot Road and Overhill Road. Um, they went off without a hitch and within my projected budget of around 26,000. So, um, feedback so far has been good on, from people who've traveled it and, uh, we're just kind of let it sit for a couple of weeks and let people travel on it and then see if it needs to be reshaped. But, uh, overall, I think they came out well. I don't know what other folks think. Can I jump in Hugh? Yeah. I took a drive up and I tell you there, it's an outstanding job you did. It's, uh, it really looks super. And, uh, and thanks for coming up with the idea. Yeah, our, you're welcome. Our guys are uh, I'm very lucky to have a group of guys that are pretty self-sufficient. They all know their role and uh, we completed it within, I think it took two days to do uh, both places all together. So um, that went well. Um, mud season was pretty mild this year, so uh, we didn't really have any uh, really bad issues. We just kept on top of them as they came up, so uh, that was pretty good. Um, yeah, currently we're starting to grade pretty deep and uh, turn those roads over so we can put an application of chloride down. Um, so that's pretty early. Uh, usually, I guess that doesn't happen until May, um, but so far we've had a mix of snow, dust. Now we're going to maybe go back to, to snow again, um, 
but uh, I think the roads are in pretty good shape overall. <clears throat> um, trying to think of what else. Uh, we've been given a couple of projects to do to assist the rec department with. Um, one at Old Mill Park and one at the skate park. So we'll be moving forward on those in the next month. Uh, what else we have? And yeah, that's pretty much it for notable stuff. Hugh. Thank you, Hugh. I noticed too that uh, the, um, you worked almost a dark one night and uh, I appreciate the fact that you stuck right with it and uh, a little overtime is, you know, it happens and sometimes it uh, turns out for the best and I'm sure it did for that job. Yeah, you got to get stuff done. And uh, plus I looked at the date and we were still within plowing overtime hours. So <laughs> yeah, you, you were one night almost to seven, right? No, it was like five something. But, oh, was uh, it? That, I thought it was later than that. No, we've uh, sometimes I have a hard time getting Mark with Ulier to go home. But uh, it wasn't that late. Well, I hated to go home when I worked for Morseville because I liked the gravy. <laughs> Anything else, Hugh? Um, besides the report, I've got a couple of topics. Um, one of which is <clears throat> this summer, as you guys know, summertime is when my guys are trying to use up some of their CTO time. And that kind of leaves us at a disadvantage. Our crew, looking at our schedule, I don't think we have a week uh, during between Memorial Day and Labor Day where we're at full staff. Um, I'd really like to bring on a part-timer as needed. Um, Alex is available weekends, but uh, it'd be helpful to have somebody um, as needed. You know, we might need them eight hours a week, one week and never again for two weeks. And then they might need to work 40. Um, and be hoping to hand pick someone who's got their CDL and uh, can operate machinery as needed. Um, just wanted to know what the board's thought was on that. That's a great idea. I'm not quite as eager as Mike is. I'm curious what that would do to budget. Um, I think what ultimately is going to happen is we're going to use Alex less because we're not going to be doing as much weekends. Um, what is going to increase our budget or excuse me, what's going to increase our workload is the rec department is hoping that we can mow the rail trail more often. Last year we did it, I think a couple of times this year, they'd like it done once or twice a month. Um, that's a two day job that really can't be done on weekends. So, that's going to add uh, some workload to us. Does REC have that in their budget? No. Yeah, I would just say if it's not something that's in the REC's budget and they're the ones asking for it, we shouldn't probably be spending the money on it unless they have are balancing their budget in a different way. Mm. Good point, Beth. But overall, I don't think it's going to affect our budget numbers to bring them on. Um, last year, Alex had 400 and some hours um, working nights and weekends. So uh, we're basically be just using some of that money. Oh, he was remediate. He was doing remedi remediation at the pit, was he not? Was that like that? Yeah, he was doing some pit work and mowing. Yep. And uh, we might get that resolved too. Mowing the rail trail is important, but um, it, it's also you know, responsibility, at least um, in theory, of the, uh, the state and and uh, vast, as I understand. Yeah, she said that the state should be taking it over. I don't know why they haven't yet, but the feedback that even I've heard is the Johnson segment of the rail trail looks rattier than others because we don't mow it as often as our neighbors. Well. They stay can give us some money or they can do it themselves. It's not our job to subsidize them. It's their job to subsidize us. Mm -hmm. Well, it is an important asset. I mean, it doesn't need to get mowed. I, I hate to just abdicate it, but yeah, you're not totally wrong either. 
I, I there was one year we mowed it once. So if you mowed it twice, that's you know twice as much as I had done before. Mm -hmm. Can I interrupt here? I, Go I think, ahead. I think we're getting too detailed on a ten thousand foot view here. Hugh was asking if we were interested in him possibly finding somebody that might fit good as a part-time employee. I agree with Beth on budget, but you can look for somebody. It would just be good to know about what that would offset or the town would gain from it. Gain from what? Uh, uh, I mean. You had a part-time guy there while other people were there. Uh, possibly you could get more work than a part-time guy on his own, although a lot of work is on your own. Well, uh, he was just know, calling for a guy for like one day or something every so often. He's not bringing him in. in. I mean, the grand scheme of, in the grand scheme of thing is when I look at um, what we failed to accomplish uh, in the last couple of years, different culverts and projects and things like that. I think it's because, you know, we're down to two, three guys at times during the summer. Um, so adding that person uh, especially as we're trying to ditch um, to meet the state standards, you know, it's, it's, it really hinders your productivity when you've only got one truck hauling versus two or three. Ideally, we, I'd like to put, you know, all three trucks out on the road when we're ditching, especially when we're far away from a dump site. So I feel it's pretty advantageous to fill that periodic gap with someone. The things that are running through my head or what would I think if I were at work, what would I be asking? And I guess I would be asking what would be the deliverables this year that would be committed to, what would be the stretch goals for what we're committing to um, without, an, you know, without that additional hours? And then what, you know, what is the productivity increase with the additional hours? You know, what does it mean we could deliver? Um, that we probably wouldn't other we'd either have as a stretch goal or wouldn't be able to deliver. Mm -hmm. What you remember is we're probably not going to need an increase in budget because it's going to be offsetting using Alex less on the weekends and evenings. Well, we we with this uh, winter being the least snowy on record there can't be a a glut of overtime like there was in the past years correct so we already have more hours from our power now than we had a last time mm -hmm. how many yeah, i don't know kind of overtime have the guys used i don't have that in front of me maybe rosemary does i don't i mean we've used very little quite honestly especially since we already have we like we just added a whole new full-time person two years ago yeah that's that's what i'm struggling with um just a couple of years ago we added a fifth employee and all of the arguments you just stated were the same arguments that we used to get voter approval to add an extra employee with that increase in the, in the budget. Um, and then we go back to the voters next year and, and we have to tell them that the fifth employee is not, uh, you know, we still gotta have more part-timers. This was something we were supposed to be able to avoid by having a fifth time employee. So that's where I'm struggling with is how we sell this to the voters. I think well, that Go ahead. The main trouble is with all this time off, that, that's the whole crux of the whole matter right there. Uh, we actually should have been paying more overtime in the past and having less time off. Uh, but everybody wanted to, uh, thought they were going to be saving on that. So we still had the same problem. Uh, I think Hugh has already talked about, we had one part-time employee that we're not really using uh, as much. And he's just asking for a day or two when somebody's out. I mean, it's no real big deal. And I don't understand why we're giving you such a hard time over this. Well, I, I guess my point, Mike, is uh, 
we've not changed the amount of comp time that the employees could could build up. It's still 40 hours. And yet we've got a fairly new force there now who uh, don't have or earn as much vacation time. Plus we've already put a fifth employee on the payroll. We should be able to make it work. And that was the whole reason we, we justified the fifth employee was not needing the part-timers. I understand that Eric, but Hugh sees it differently. You know, and he's got the best interests of the town at heart. Uh, we should defer to what he wants, I would think. I think to the accomplish case his job. That can be made, the case that can be made to the voters is each year we increase the amount expected of the highway department by adding different things. You know, just these couple of um, projects going with uh, the rec department. I mean, that's going to take a couple of weeks of our time. Um, nothing that I forecasted doing. So um, I think that, and then if we start talking about this merger, there's going to be a, we're starting to really diversify the portfolio of the workload from us, uh, from being just a highway department to doing a lot more public works type stuff. So I think if there becomes an issue um, with the taxpayers, then, you know, I can certainly delve into that side of things to help justify it but i don't really in the grand scheme of things i don't think it's going to change my budget um, having another option uh, for a person to come in and help us as needed you can you talk about the things that you're referring to for the rec committee i'm not really sure what those i see that it's referenced like generally the basketball court prep and old mill park building prep but what does that yeah. mean yeah I don't know a lot about the Old Mill Park project. Brian probably knows more. I know we're supposed to cut some trees and do some fill material and some <clears throat> general site work to prepare for whatever construction project they have going on. And then the basketball court, I'll know more about it tomorrow, but I've prepped a lot of basketball courts in my life and uh, it's gonna take some time for sure. So the Old Mill Park is for the uh, Welcome Center Improved Trailhead Project. Um, we had committed to providing some in-kind uh, work by tree clearing and uh, moving fill uh, to, for the new structure. Okay, what is the basketball court? Do you know? Uh, that's a project going with the skate park uh, that they want to have a basketball court added. They've been working on it for a couple of years uh, and they're getting really close to having the funding and everything for the paving. Um, and that's another one that we had previously committed uh, as, to help match their the money they raise with some preliminary site work with our public works group. Uh, that would be leveling the ground, packing, uh, Kind of leveling and tamping the ground so that it'll be ready for blacktop. And then my next question, Eric's been waiting for this whole night. I know it. <laughs> like, what is the priority of all of the things that are on the town's list of things to do? And do these make it to the top of that priority list? Well, certainly the. I don't know where the rec department stuff lies. I know where it lies in my eyes, but um, we'll, uh, get it done. But, um, <clears throat> you know, we have quite a few things to do and uh, the, the ditching is huge. Um, just with the state changing their, uh, you know, their standards for uh, water runoff. So we've got essentially dozens of miles of ditching to be done in both directions. Uh, never mind a bunch of culverts to do and uh, things of that nature. So it's definitely, I'll, I'll work their stuff in as best that I can because I want everybody to be happy. Mike? Eric, our primary responsibility is roads and records. Everything else kind of comes secondary. So you needs to take care of the roads and uh, some of that other stuff should be secondary. Well, the Welcome Center, we're pretty well committed to so that, yeah. you know, we, we've, We've made some big promises on that to uh, yeah. uh, we, to we have a hard stop of 
uh, August timeframe, I believe, to have that completed to get all of the financing. Uh, that's a donation to the town of the, in the range of forty thousand dollars. So that's not something we want to uh, you know, let go by the way. I understand, Eric, but I don't think it's going to take that much time with the public uh, works department. So, Hugh, uh, as far as bringing on a part time, uh, one thing that there is a known is what you have for money now and as how the budget is going heading towards June 30th. After June 30th, it's a new budget and we had not budgeted this extra part-timer. Uh, if, if you, you know, in that July, August timeframe, the end of the summer spent out a lot of that uh, budgeted money for a part-timer that could short us next year through a different winter scenario than what we just experienced. But as far as this year going into the first of the summer, um, you can look at the budget and see how the numbers are running and whether we can afford it. But we we had not budgeted for the new the next budget uh, for the, a part timer. Yeah, I don't. As long as we budgeted for <clears throat> how much we utilized Alex in years past, which is usually about 500 hours uh, or more. What I'm going to do isn't going to change anything. Never mind the fact that we're well ahead with our overtime allotment. <clears throat> on the Alex, on um, Alex's part-time work, as I recall, and my memory might not be, well, it's not going to be what Eric's is, but um, that we had allocated a certain amount of hours for him to do that remediation work on the pit because we just had to do that. Um, that was a discrete mm -hmm. task that we just had to do. Um, is it, were we using, were we employing him part-time before that for 500 hours a, a year or so? Uh, pretty much. I'd have to go back into the records to find the exact number of hours, but we didn't increase him by that much for the pit remediation. I believe that he got a small increase in hours and just rescheduled from other tasks. Oh, so this, Hugh's not really, what he's asking for isn't really a change from what we've had in, in previous years then? Not tremendously. You know, we're going to be doing a little bit less with Alex in the pit. We'll be doing less with Alex in other tasks. Uh, the large factor for that, as I understand it, is that Alex is not available during work hours. And what Hugh really wants from this new employee would be a, a part-time employee who's available with the rest of the crew and can fill in as an additional man um, to kind of get the most out of our mobilization. When we put people out and we start on a task, having as many hands available at the same time, um, he thinks will be kind of the most productive. Exactly. Okay, where's the board's pleasure? Do we uh, want to consent with Hugh's proposal? Yes. 20 minutes later. Matt, your comfort level? I'm good with it. And, I, and I'm, also good, I'm also good with uh, uh, understanding an issue and asking questions so that we fully, <laughs> fully understand it instead of just spending money on stuff. <laughs> right. Yes. You know what Nat said, everything. <laughs> Eben? I don't see why he needs our consent at all, as long as he doesn't go over the allotted budget and hours. He can hire whoever he wants part-time. Yeah, I'll go with that one, too. I agree with that, too, Evan. Okay, Hugh, go ahead. You got anything I, else? I just want to make one thing abundantly clear. Uh, normally, the select board retains and holds all of uh, all discretion for staffing decisions. You're okay delegating that to Hugh and myself to kind of move this along a little more quickly? Yes. Okay. I, I just wanted to make that abundantly clear. that mm -hmm. Because we only have a window, a small window to really get a lot accomplished. Yeah. And we, we need to do that to, to get up to snuff. And uh, we can't be wasting time by having this consensus stuff. And I'm 
more than happy with giving you and uh, you the authority to do that. Great. That, yep, that, I just wanted to make it clear that that was the decision. Okay, well, I heard from Eben and Mike. I have not heard from Nat and Beth. I would be happy to give Hugh the authority to hire. I disagree with the, we don't need consensus. That's what a board's about. I understand that, but sometimes, you know, to, to have a meeting and to, uh, to go over this and to hash over it, uh, precious time is wasted. And, uh, you know, we have to put a certain amount of uh, trust in these two individuals. And I trust them both. Matt? Um, I, I don't have anything to add. Okay. It's you not like they're gonna hire a permanent employee. They're gonna hire a part-timer that's gonna work right. a few hours a week. No, nobody, nobody implied that we're not trusting our employees. All right, I, I just think that that's... I, I mean, I'm, I just added that and that, that we're not hiring a full-time employee. This is just a, a part-timer, you right. know, just to fill in for a few hours. We're going to retain our right to hire full-time employees. We'll never give that up, ever. And I don't think the board is relinqu relinquishing its uh, responsibilities with the budget. So if you're going to incur any budget increases, you know, you still need to come to the select board. Exactly. Yep. Uh, Hugh, anything else? Um, just that I'm interested in changing the cruise schedule a little bit. I am a huge believer in four tens during the summer. Um, some of my guys are kind of reluctant, but I feel we get a lot more done when the whistle's not blowing at the eight hour, um, eighth hour in the day. Um, I'm a little torn on it because I feel like we should all go to four tens. However, I do think that there is an advantage to having someone there on Fridays. So I would like the board to consider allowing the crew to go to four tens. Uh, one person would remain on five eights. That's a great idea. Most efficient use of time. Hugh, previous boards have tried this over 15, 20 years. And I've been a huge advocate of doing four 10 hour days. Um, if you can get the crew to do it, I'll shake your hand. Yeah, same Who would here. one employee be? Uh, Jason, who's kind of my second in command. Um, and he can run all the equipment. Yeah, and the big thing is there's a lot of stuff that can be done to prepare for Monday. So he'll be more than busy. So he wants to stay on eight hour days. Yeah. Okay, fine. You can stay on eight hour days, the rest of the crew can work tens and have their three day weekend. Go ahead and poll the employees, see what you can get. What's, what's the accountability if you have one employee working and stuff's not ready for Monday or what? Or they check, uh, they check it out. Uh, Jason's pretty self sufficient. Um, so he'll have eight hours basically to do whatever I tell him to do. So he's, you know, I've got a good group of guys. I trust all of them by themselves. So um, the one thing I was gonna ask and I can't remember, but, um, oh, I mean, I did poll everybody and everybody's on board for it, so. Well, we'll shake your hand then. Eh? Yeah, I'll shake your hand as soon as I can. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I know we're, we've got one area that are, so the, our existing policy needs to be updated in, in two ways. The first one, uh, I think you kind of are by consensus, but it'd be nice to get a vote for would be uh, our previous policy said that everybody had to do four tens or nobody could. So uh, we're gonna change, uh, we'll get a vote to change the policy so that it's now whatever split, uh, we want or one person kind of, we'll, we'll phrase it however you like. Uh, the other was if a holiday falls during the four tens, um, currently holidays are paid at a flat eight hours. Uh, if an employee who was taking four tens has a holiday fall on one of their days that they would normally work a 10 hour day, 
are they going to get paid 10 hours or eight hours? Yes, the good question. <laughs> <laughs> well, the deal is by working for tens, they're actually being more efficient and uh, doing better work for the town. So I don't think it's too big of a compromise to give them the full 10 hours. You want to do that for every employee for the town? Our, the ones that we're, the public works department, uh, because the uh, office is not going to four tens. This is only the public works department. If we're talking about changing policy, don't we have to warn this and discuss it? Yeah, we can't do that tonight. And no, we, need we to, can't. We need to give some good thought to this because we are in the middle of negotiations with the uh, public works department employee uh, union. So that may drive some changes to the personnel policy as well. Well, we, we still are working under the old system until the new system takes place. So I don't think that has a lot to well, do with it, Eric. Our next meeting's a work session. Uh, probably, Brian, you ought to draw up some proposed changes to our personnel policy that would uh, support this. All right, I'll have that for our next meeting. Nothing is ever simple. No. Anything else, Hugh? Nope. Okay. I do have a comment from the public, if you're ready. Um, okay, we are behind schedule, but just this one, I guess. All right, there you go, Ann. I, I just wanted to state that there's a lot of changes that need to be made to that policy. I know years ago we had uh, joint meetings where we were going to, you know, suggest changes, make changes, and nothing was ever done with it. It just kind of fell through the cracks. So not that I care anymore, but there really are a lot of changes that need to be made to it. Thank you. Daryl? Uh, and we've got another comment from the public. Uh, Daryl, go ahead. Yes, uh, I was just curious, having one individual working by himself, is is there any fear of something happening to him and nobody knowing? That was it. I don't. I think he's a lot less have to be... Uh, in danger compared to uh, Alex working in the pit by himself. Yeah, I think that'll affect the tasks that we that he gets assigned. Right. Yeah, I think it probably would. So, Hugh, you don't plan on being there on Friday yourself, then? No. Correct. Okay. Okay. If we're ready to move on, we uh, have Emily Rosenbaum. Here from the Loyal yep. Area Health and Human Services. Thank you, Emily. Thank you for your patience. Thank you, Emily. Hi, thanks for having me. Um, somehow my 14 year old decided this was the moment he'd start vacuuming. So hopefully you don't hear it. Um, so I am I able to share screen? Uh, I'll turn that on, hold on. Thank you so much. And I really appreciate you having me here tonight. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. So I am going to start with um, this, which is our um, organizational chart. So 13 months ago, well, actually, 12 months ago, we had our first meeting, but 13 months ago, when the pandemic hit, our area health and human services organizations um, began meeting together to try to work together and pull in the same direction to better help our community throughout the pandemic. And pretty quickly it became clear that we were going to need a strong structure to it. And so what happened is that we ended up forming, um, using the uh, incident command structure, which is often, as you may or may not know, used in crisis situations such as natural disasters. 
And um, what we came to realize is that would be a great way for us to respond to this. Um, and so we have between 20 and 30 different organizations involved. And right here in the center, well, right here at the bottom, I'm sorry, is what we would normally have put in the center if we could redo this org chart, which is our five operational areas. And that's shelter, food, mental health, substance misuse, medical and employment. And those really core things that our community needs are being served by all the rest of this. Our commanders hold us together. They set objectives. We meet every two weeks. We all pull in the same direction on the objectives. You'll notice we have everything from, I function as the house of worship liaison to business liaisons, childcare liaisons. We're working with all the different parts of the health, Lamoille health area. Um, what's a little different about this than some other collaboratives is that we're unified in our finance and admin, which is providing support um, and our planning, which is also really helping us all pull in the same direction because we have these planning folks um, who are making sure that we have everything that we need to be hitting our objectives. And then you're all probably familiar with my work as the public information officer because you get updates from me every week. Um, but that's the other thing that's a little different here is that when I'm doing public information, I'm not doing it for one organization. I'm doing it for all of the organizations together. I'm gonna to briefly show, which I think you've probably seen each week. This is the newsletter you're getting every week, except this week, because it was school break. And um, so we took the week off. Um, and each week you're getting this and the sharing priority is especially important because it almost always aligns with the objectives that have been set by all these different organizations. Everyone from substance misuse to healthcare, to food, to housing, et cetera. And that sharing priority is meant when it goes out to 600 different leaders in the county, they share it out again. And an example is that, you know, when there's been a, a focus on um, substance misuse, our houses of worship have then turned around and shared information about substance misuse and harm reduction packs with their distribution lists or our legislators or our select boards all have the option to be sharing back out the stuff that we're sending so that we're really starting to reach up our roads and, and into our communities so people are getting the information they need. I wanna share one more thing before I stop screen sharing. And I think most of you have seen this as well because I've, I've put it in each newsletter, but this is the United Way of Lamoille County resource page. It's updated um, every couple of days, if not every day with resources that are to the moment relevant. And so um, everything that's in that newsletter ends up in here as well. Um, so I'll go to the employment page because I was just on there today doing a little updating. Um, which has information about employment, but for example, today I added these classes, um, the Construction 101 class that's gonna be at uh, the Tech Center through resource. And when that information comes in, it goes right into the newsletter, but it also ends up on the resource page where we also have more time sensitive things down here in the, um, the updates. So if somebody's looking for information, for example, on um, healthcare, they can come in here. And this again is updated all the time by our partners with um, the healthcare information that we have. So we're all working together, pulling together, and it's representing a lot of different organizations. And the reason I'm coming around to select boards is to be available to answer questions. So before I give you a couple of examples, do you have any questions about the stuff so far? I'm trying to go quickly because I know you guys spent a lot of time on the earlier portion and I don't, I know how it feels to be off schedule. Um, and then the other, the, the other thing I wanted to mention was just a couple of examples for you to get a sense of how this has been working. Um, so my favorite example right now is the freezers. Our food folks came to us and they said, we need more freezers in the county. We have this, everyone eats food, but we don't have any place to put it. The turkeys come at Thanksgiving, there's no place to put the turkeys. All of these different organizations need access to freezers. 
So the planning and public information folks got together. We went to Rich Westman. Rich sent us to someone who sent us to someone else who sent us to someone else, which is how it works. The money came back, then it went to Capstone. It, it was all these different organizations. The long and short of it is freezers are coming. They're going to various places around the health area. They're gonna be stocked by various organizations. Capstone did the, 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 um, was the fiscal agent, but the freezers are there. And now our county is gonna have these freezers and next Thanksgiving when all the turkeys come in and they don't know where to put the turkeys, there's freezers that are distributed around the county in places that are accessible to people who may not have the transportation that they need. And the other example I will give is in the substance misuse area. Although we have, as you probably saw, a list of a lot of different successes, which is in your packet. Um, but to me and near and dear to my heart is the successes that we've had with substance misuse harm reduction. Um, we've really wanted to make sure that people around the area are aware of the harm reduction to go packs and the Narcan in particular. And when we share that information out, it's a collaboration of a lot of different organizations. Um, in a given week, we'll have 15 packs go out the door just through our communications. And there've been several lives saved. And that's really North Central Vermont um, Recovery Center has done that work in putting those together, but also pulling on a lot of the other resources. They're pulling in socks from JCOGS and they're pulling in hats from here in order to make them more attractive packets. And they're putting information from all of the different places. And there've been several lives saved from overdose in our county because of those packs. So it's working, this collaboration. It's a lot of work, but we're all pretty committed to it. And it's been really incredible and inspirational to see how everyone is working together in that way. So I am available to answer any questions you could have about it, because although you get my updates, I'm sure you weren't quite aware of everything that was going on behind the scenes. Yeah. Thank you, Emily. You put a lot into that very short time. Um, early on in the pandemic, we were working very closely with that co co collaboration of, of groups and uh, and our own Nat Kinney is one of the uh, uh, liaisons on that organization. Uh, any questions from anybody? I echo what Eric said. It's really impressive how you've come together under the, the this command structure format. Um, and is uh, when I do get your emails, and there there's a lot in them, but uh, I I forward on information as to the to people. Um, as uh, you know, as I can, and, and as I see where it makes sense. So thanks, and and keep it up. Thank you. Yeah, we're we're trying to figure out where we're going from here, and things will be changing. But I think we're seeing a new era of collaboration and working together, which is really nice. Emily, I have a question. Um, I very much appreciate the umbrella of bringing all these really important social services to our community. Um, my question is, do you have a link, like a sign up where folks in the community can sign up and be part of the email blast that you send out? They can just email me and I add them to the list. And my email address is also right on that um, United Way resource page. So if they end up there, they'll, they'll find my email. Um, so anybody who wants to be added should just email me. Great, thank you. There's a lot of really good information in there, so. Very Thank much you. Some of our best communications come from just random community members who ask to be added. There's one woman, she's not on my child care provider list because she's not running a child care. She works in a child care. She forwards it to people, she prints it up, she brings it into work. You know, she just wants to share information. Our secret secret weapon has been the librarians because you know that's what they do, they share information. <laughs> Anyone else? Going once, going twice. Well, Emily, I appreciate you taking the time to come to the select board meeting tonight and share all that with us. Thank you so much. I am gonna log off because I do about two select board meetings a week right now. So I'm gonna <laughs> log off for the rest of it. Thank you guys. Thank Good you. Good night, Emily. Thank you for coming. Yeah, thank you. Good night. Okay. Uh, I guess go into your agenda or uh, report there, Brian. All right. Excuse me for a second. I got to take care of a dog. 
Uh, Drew Fairbanks. Yep. So yeah. the first item up, uh, Drew Fairbanks is applying for uh, sewer service. Uh, he wants to hook up another part of his property. And I sent you a copy of the map. Um, so we had a little bit of a challenge with this property uh, before and hooking up his house to the sewer uh, district because it was not especially clear uh, where the intended sewer service area was. Um, and he's got, now he wants to hook up an area that's even farther away from the road and uh, that hookup is a little bit, you know, it, it's still difficult to, uh, to see the nature of uh, and see how that's going to fit and work with our existing agreement with the village for this. Can, um, can you share that map while you speak to it? Yeah. Just give everybody a reference. And the or the existing sewer service area is close to the property lines, but it's not exact. It's about there. Whose property line? Uh, so Drew's was able to hook up his house, staying entirely on his property. Uh, he owns a, a path in between these two lots here. And so that's where his sewer runs now, yeah. you're saying? And his hookup is inside the sewer service area, but his house is not. So there was a question about, um, you know, well, what does it mean to hook onto the line and what's an appropriate usage of the hookups. When he wants to do this new service area oh, that's farther out, he owns all this property. He can run the line across his own property and down to uh, the sewer line on, on Sinclair Road. And the hookup will be uh, the hookup will be inside the sewer service area but the property it serves will not. It seems I'm very like, confused by that. It, it seems like when we approved his house, it was because it was questionable whether the sewer line was actually on his property or the service area was on his property or not. But this proposed sewer area is definitely not within that sewer district. Yes. But th this is a, I think this is, this is well outside of the interpretation we've had of this before. And the dash line, I'm guessing, is the village limit? Yes. So that's why it's coming to us for the town sewer district. It's coming to us first. The, the village hasn't weighed in on it. What does he want to do with the, why is he extending it out, do you know? Uh, he things that he might sell the property uh, and would like to have, if he can get it, he'd like to have sewer service for, the, for that property because he thinks it'll make the property more valuable if he uh, decides to sell it in the future. I don't know the logic behind that. I think I'd rather have my own drill well, my own septic system so I didn't have to pay those huge fees for water and sewer in the village, uh, but uh, I'm going to go back to one of our joint meetings we had uh, several years ago uh, when Walter Pomeroy talked about they want as much uh, area as they possibly can because they want more customers for the wastewater treatment plant because they have a lot of reserve capacity. So this would kind of be their call, wouldn't it, really? We, we could uh, preliminary approve it and they could make the final decision. Yeah, they do have the final say. Uh, 
but it does come to us first and that's why we're yes here. i understand i understand that eric but i'm going by what they the board that board said several years ago mm -hmm. that they want as much sewer uh hookups as they possibly can get so why don't we just approve this do you know how much uh, is left of that allocation of it would end up being 28,000 gallons per day. Uh, I don't, I don't have that. Yeah, no. but we're, we're, we've got quite a bit of allocation that's reserved for the town left. Um, How much of that was set aside in thinking for the light industrial part? We haven't set aside any specific amount, but just because so far we've been, uh, we haven't had that much usage. So we're. And some of that uh, industrial park is within the village limits, which is automatically uh, eligible for uh, hookup. And the rest is uh, within a town sewer district. So it's already pre-approved. What makes this one's a little bit stickier is it's there's no question it is outside of a town sewer district um and if we don't follow our own town wide sewer district then it exposes us to areas where people may want to uh hook on and petition us and we it's not an area where we want to uh you know promote development or what have you that had gotten us in trouble a few years ago. So if I can offer a suggestion for this, this seems to be pretty much the example of the kind of thing we wanted the planning commission to look at when they're looking at rules for how to deal with um, customers who wanted to hook on to the, the sewer system and were not in the current uh, town sewer service area. Um, you know, did we want to expand it in particular directions? Do we want to have criteria to hook up? Um, we don't have any guidelines on it right now. We can change the map. We can add to the map. Uh, as long as it's done with the consent of the town and the village, we can make changes. Um, but it, it's better to have those changes planned than it is uh, kind of ad hoc deciding on a case by case basis of do we like this one or do we like that one. It, it's better to have some criteria for that, which would be a great task for the planning commission. Brian, can I ask a question about this map? Yes. Um, is that proposed sewer area a subdivision of a parcel or is that all part of a single parcel? Uh, that is part of the same parcel. That's just a, a drawing that he has for what, where he wants it and where he's thinking he'd subdivide. So it's not even a subdivision at this point. Right. And he already has sewer connection on the parcel. Yes. Eric. Go ahead, Mike. When I, uh, I stepped out for just a second, was anything for what he was asking for allocation, was that even mentioned? No, he's just asking permission to be hooked up, correct? Uh, I do have his allocation, but it's, this is, it, the allocation is tough here because it's not a, for a development that's already in place. It's for a hypothetical future development that he might have someday. Well, usually if you're going to come before board, you have a specific amount of allocation that you're asking for. Yes, and he does. Well, what is it? It is. I've got to review this with him. I don't know. If it doesn't have a final number on it. Uh, but he's proposing basically a... Uh, house with uh, two bathrooms. 
I mean, honestly, I am really uncomfortable even talking about this for a whole bunch of reasons. And the biggest reason is that whatever the outcome is, it's setting a precedent. And that's a dangerous situation to be in, particularly when we don't have any real information. It, it's all what ifs from what I'm hearing. Again, my recommendation for this is to go to the Planning Commission and work on their criteria for making decisions like this in the future. Well, yes, we should because we we should be helping the village out because they they did make a request at a previous meeting, if I'm not mistaken, that they would like more hookups. Yep. So, you know, um, we should be trying to find a way to to work with them on this. And so when you're talking about the planning commission, that might be the good vehicle to approach us. Is uh, there consensus on the board to have this uh, sent over to the planning commission? Yes. Yes. I haven't said anything yet. Uh, because I've, uh, I need to recuse myself from the conversation, so. Okay, thanks, Nat. Let the record show that Nat has recused himself from the conversation. Evan? Yes. Okay, so there is full consensus on that. So I guess we'll push it over to the uh, Planning Commission, have them take a look at it. And I see we have one member, at least one from the public, wants yep. to speak. Okay, go ahead, Ken. I, uh, Brian, can you put that map back up for a second? Oh, sure. So the reason I'm not, I wanted to say something is I own the property right below where his uh, uh, proposed sewer area is, and I'm assuming that's for a conventional septic. Well, there's two wells that are within a thousand feet, probably actually less than that. One of them is going to be about 200 feet. Uh, um, if, you, if you zoom in, you can see where Lambert Lane is. That's my driveway. And right at the top of that, there's a well. That's my well. And that serves the lower property and my upper property, which is the triangle that borders that. Um, my neighbor's Nielsen's on the other side, uh, their well is closer to that septic area. So I don't know if anybody considers this or not, but we've both been here for 26, 27 years. So it should be a consideration for the board to consider to actually hook him up to the village sewer system, since how it does run across his property and he could contaminate wells by using that other area. So if he develops that area, that's a huge sewer system. You're, I'm in the village and the town and I don't want your water or your sewer. So I don't want to have to buy it. Um, I already paid a lot of money to have a well drilled and so did Nielsen because they had to drill two. So just please consider that. And as even as Mike said, the village wants sewer. There's a place to connect and there's no better place to add on other houses than that area because you already have the pipe existing there, even though it is outside the limits. But uh, just I'm really concerned about my well and my neighbor's well. So. Well, I, I can help a little bit, Ken, that he will. If there is going to be septic in the area, it will have to pass and get a state wastewater permit. And the state inspection will include uh, drinking water and uh, measure its impact on local drinking water. So there, there are some safeguards before this, separate from uh, the discussion about sewer uh, and whether he hooks onto town, uh, village sewer or not. Um, okay. But uh, I think Kent wants to respond, but. Okay. Okay, sorry, ahead, I muted it. I muted it too quick. Um, I'm not knocking it at all. I, I think development for Johnson is great. I'm just saying that. Also, where if you go to, uh, uh, towards Nat's place, the upper corner of that proposed sewer area, 
that line that runs back down towards my driveway, it is a natural runoff there. And there is a valley and we have a pond that goes down and crosses down through. So that is another thing to consider. As I said, I mean, I'm all for everybody doing what they want on their property, but it's really, you guys could solve a future impact to my properties. I own two parcels here and so does Nielsen's. So we don't really want to impact anybody else to help develop when there's a good possibility of just hooking into that line that's existing, right? So, again, okay. thanks for listening. Yep, thank you, Ken. Eric. Uh, Mike? Yes, uh, you know, I, I'm all for, you know, hooking into the village, uh, but when the point was brought up about uh, precedent and stuff like that, we, we do have to get that ironed all out uh, before we start opening up a can of worms. And we, we talked about the uh, Planning Commission um, maybe coming up with something, uh, an equitable solution to this. But like uh, Ken said, you know, we should have development and uh, village water and sewer will help that. Mm -hmm. And it brings more money in for taxes yep. too, so. So noted. Okay, uh, next item, Planning Commission appointments. So the planning commission would like to make appointments of uh, the Shane Spence and Charles Gallanter. Uh, let me grab real quick and make sure that I get their terms right. What's the planning commission appointment for? Charles Gallanter. Charles Gallanter. Yeah. Charles Gallanter. Yeah. Chair now. Uh, Paul Warden was elected chair. Okay. Thank you. Is Paul on tonight? I didn't see him. Uh, but yeah, Charles would like the uh, the available three-year appointment and Shane is fine with the available two-year appointment. Okay. Um, and I'm assuming they've been properly vetted by the Planning Commission, even though Charles has been there forever. I'm sure Shane has been. Correct. Before I, they both attended the last meeting. Okay. Before I open it up to uh, Charles and Shane, if they'd like to say a few words, is there any board uh, pleasure here? Well, uh, so they are both being nominated by the commission. Yes. Is that true? Yes. yes. Yeah. Oh, there's Paul. Oh, there's, there's Paul. Paul. Why don't we uh, open it up to Paul? Okay, we'll do Paul first, and then I'll, I, I see your hand, Charlie. I'll get to you uh, shortly. Okay, let's try that again, Paul. All right, there we go. Hi. Hi, so I'm uh, logged in under Margo here. Um, is there a question you wanted to address to me? Yeah, sure. I was just asking if um, both Shane and Charlie were nominees directly from the, the commission. Uh, yes, we met last week, <clears throat> excuse me, and um, on Thursday, and we voted unanimously to recommend to the select board that both uh, Charlie and Shane be appointed as members of the Planning Commission. Thank you. Any further questions or any statement from Paul? If not, what's the board's pleasure? I would reiterate that, uh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Paul. Go ahead, Paul. Okay, I, I would say uh, Charlie has contributed substantially to past meetings and I look forward to his continued participation. And Shane is well known around town and is bringing new energy um, and we need new blood. So uh, I'm excited to have both of them as members and Looking forward to one task uh, you've already assigned us. So <laughs> I appreciate your consideration. Thank you, Paul. Is the board prepared to make a motion and a second to nominate or uh, appoint the two? So move, Mr. Chairman. Got a motion, do we have a second? Second. Got a motion and a second. Any board member discussion before I open it up? and allow Charles and Shane, if he wants to speak. 
We still have an open question on the terms for um, Greg and was it Kylie who had? Yep. Uh, we have a recommendation uh, of, we have a two year, we have another two year and three year available. We can appoint whatever mix uh, we like. We can do Greg two years, Kylie three years or the other way around. Do they want them? <laughs> uh, they, they are willing. They're willing. So it might take... be a, a stronger statement than they'd make, but they're willing. <laughs> so we'll, we'll take that up in the next question after we uh, take the vote on the nomination or the, the appointment. Go ahead, Charlie. Uh, you got to unmute, Charlie. Okay, let's see. How do I do that? You're, uh, you're unmuted. No, you're <laughs> no, muted. No, you're again. muted again. All right, technologically challenged. There are currently three clearly open, clear vacancies on the planning commission. One two-year term and two three-year terms. The three-year terms would be the ones that Kim, um, Kim Dunkley vacated and the one that um, Phil Wilson previously vacated. So those are two three-year terms available. The two-year term is available is the one that I vacated. That's so you can, I've requested a three-year term. Shane could get either a three or a two-year term as you may agree. And the second item is um, when you talked about uh, Kylie and, and, um, and Greg Tatro, <clears throat> this would be a good time since you've warned an appointment meeting to appoint them to three-year terms expiring in 2023. This would backfill from 2020 when they should have, it should have been in the, you know, clear then. But they each filled three-year terms. One was Evan Patch's term and the other one was Ben Waterman's term, both of which were three-year terms. That's all I got. Thank you, Charlie, for clearing that up. Yeah, <laughs> real clear. Uh, Shane, do you have anything you want to say? You're ready, willing, and able? Charlie said it all, so uh, we'll leave it at that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you both. Uh, thank you both for volunteering. What's the board's pleasure? You ready to vote? We can't really vote because we need to change what the terms are for the two individuals. What was your motion? I just met, I moved to a point. Uh, but there was no stipulation on okay. the uh, terms. You want to amend your motion to follow the guidelines as suggested by Charlie? Yes. Okay, is that a friendly amendment to the uh, seconder? Uh, I propose that Charlie get a year term um, and Shane get a two year term, just as Brian had said. Okay, so I. I'm not taking that as a friendly amendment. So we have a I think that was what you so moved, stated, Mike. Yeah. Yeah. Charlie stated it could be a three year or a two year for Shane Spence. So approving it based on what Charlie said is you gotta pick one of the two. Okay. Are you set are you set with that, Charlie? Thumbs up. I said you need to work that out between you and Shane. What does Shane want? Does he want two-year term or three-year term? Right. You would get in the cart before the horse, somebody here. There's a two-year term and a three-year term available, assuming I get a three-year term. That leaves one three-year and one two-year term. I'll gladly take either. Um, I I don't know. I think maybe, you know, it, give me the three-year term and then it might be easier to convince that last person to take on a two-year term um i know i'll be around so um yeah that's that's i don't really have a preference either way so the motion would be two or three year terms for charlie and shane that's what's being suggested it's not okay. the motion on the floor well i'll change it to that and then uh, evan will go along with it <laughs> <laughs> Do you uh, agree? I almost want to disagree with you on purpose, but sure. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was your it was your deal. 
You kind of have to go with it. Okay, Donna, I hope you got that. There's been a friendly <laughs> amendment with a seconder as well, changing it to two three-year terms for Charlie and Shane. Any more discussion? Yes. Can we just clarify how many exact, how many seats there are in this? Because in the um, annual report, I see that there are uh, one, two, three, four, six terms listed very specifically. And then following the terms listed, Kylie and Greg are listed. So does that mean that there are eight seats or does it mean there are six seats? There are nine, nine. seats. Nine, okay. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> the three dresses and nine. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Okay, now to deal with the second question. And that I just make a clarification. That means okay. their term will expire in 2024. True. Just to be yeah. explicit. Okay. And then the second uh, par part here was to clean up the Kylie and uh, Greg issue with what their terms were. Sorry, before we talk about Kylie and Greg very specifically, can we talk about open seats? There's still one left. There'll be one open seat left, and that open seat is a what? A well, two sorry, I'm still gonna I'm still gonna be a little bit of a pain in the you know what because I just want to make sure that I'm really clear on what the expiration of each of these terms are we're talking about. Um, because I think we're gonna be in the same boat if we don't clear it up right now. That's totally fair. You're no pain, Beth. Oh, I can be. <laughs> well, I know that, but I was trying to be kind. Uh, thank you. You can be too, I, just for the record. <laughs> I can answer that question. Go ahead, Charlie. The one remaining seat, assuming Greg and Kylie are, are seated, would be for a two-year term expiring in 2023. Sure. Okay, so that'll be the unfilled seat until we find All somebody. Right. Okay. That should answer Beth's question. Thank you. And you said both Greg and, and Kylie would have a term expiring in 2023. One would be a two year, one would be a three year. Is that no, right? they'd both no? be three year terms. They'd yeah. both be three. Okay. The remainder of a three year term. Okay. Yeah, got it. So that's what I would look for in a motion. I move to appoint Kylie Hill and Greg Tatro each to three year terms, both expiring in 2023. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Um, Go ahead, Charlie. The motion's a little confusing in that you're making the appointment in 2021 for a three-year term expiring two years later. Mm -hmm. What you're trying to do is to confirm that you really meant to appoint them in 2020 for three-year terms expiring in 2023. But through an administrative oversight, that wasn't done. I certainly was not trying to do that in 2020. <laughs> but I hear you. I, I think we know the intent of what the motioner was and what the second is from all the discussion. Um, and Donna, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to uh, raise your hand. Should it be cleaned up a little bit, Eric? In what way? And, and mention the, the, the uh, fulfilling the remainder of a three-year term? If Beth wants to- Sure, uh, yep, friendly amendment, that sounds great. Okay, I'll second that. Okay, so now we have the amended motion and second. Any other discussion? That's as clear as mud. All those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Oh, good. Thank you, Greg. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. So we still have one seat left if anyone wants it listening in. Yes. yes. Yeah, I think I saw Marla's hand go up, so we may want to.
Oh, Greg, you wanted to speak? Yeah, I was hoping for a one-year term starting in 2020. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you had it. You... <laughs> that'd, be, that'd work out about right. Yeah. <laughs> you need to go on YouTube and be a comedian. Yeah, right. Well, thank yeah. you guys for the support and the trust. We appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next item is uh, the Memorandum of Understanding with the Public Library. Right. You want to give a little background, Brian, on that? Yeah. So our, let's see, we have uh, kind of a history with, with the public library uh, and attempting to support the public library and everything we try and work in cooperation with them. And it was felt that we could streamline that process a little bit by laying out a little bit more clearly what are town responsibilities and what are library responsibilities. Because the library is an entity of the town, but it's also governed by its own board of trustees, but it operates inside of and uses town property. Um, they're they write their own budget, but it gets sub they submit it to us and it goes through. Um, it's a kind of a unique relationship between town and library. So we, we thought that it could be improved by laying out a little bit more clearly what the uh, understanding between the town and the library is and uh, kind of saying more clearly what some of the uh, rights and responsibilities are uh, for each. So with writing this, uh, do you want me to share the document? Uh, I might move through it a little bit quickly, but. Um, I'm sure we have the right document. Um, the one that was in the packet, I think was not the most current one. And just sent around, Jess Bickford, library trustee president. Uh, the chair sent around uh, the most current edition. Uh, the one in the packet is the most current version I have. And that's with our edits, correct? Yeah. yeah. You have it, something different than that? Well, it, just sent a couple things. Let me. I, I think to back up for a minute, uh, the first draft came from the library and that is something that the library trustees have reviewed. Um, that came to myself in my role as the EMD and I had some changes that I put in there. It, it has gone back to Jessica at this time. It's got to go before the library trustees. What the purpose of tonight was to inform you guys that there is one out there. Um, I was hoping to be able to share the one that, that we have sent back. This is one that I'm comfortable with right now. Um, you know, obviously it may change some again because of the trustees are gonna take a look at it. And then the, this board should take a look at it after they've submitted something. But I wouldn't expect action tonight. This is, should be an informational. And I apologize, I misunderstood, a, I misinterpreted an email that I'd gotten earlier today that Brian's right, that what's in the packet is the current version. Um, so yeah, th this is, the, the library trustees have not had an opportunity to weigh in on this, but neither has the select board. So this is the most current draft, but it's very much a draft. No one's approved. It's pretty um, close though, isn't it? I mean, it's not all that different than what the library had submitted. No, I, I think it's, I, th I think we're very close to having one completed. Yeah. Uh, probably before we send this out to the full board, wait and see if we get something from the trustees so that everybody doesn't have a bunch of different copies running around and try and figure out which is the latest version. Yeah, uh, that would be a good idea. So... We've got a little bit of history about the library and where its positions are. Uh, what this lays out 
is kind of two phases. It, it's a routine and in emergency situations. Um, most routine maintenance uh, is going to broadly be the responsibility of responsibilities of the trustees. Um, you know, saying that projects under a certain threshold uh, that are within their regular budget for maintenance, they can maintain and they don't need to seek approval from the select board. But anything that results in a permanent change to the structure or the grounds or things that are uh, more expensive um, should come before the select board. And in general, uh, large projects should be done in collaboration between the library and the town. Um, you know, and again, iterates that the uh, library trustees need consent of the select board um, before engaging it in contracts and things that change the building. Town uh, grounds is mostly, most of the outdoors is the responsibility of the town. Um, you know, kind of routine maintenance is the trustees, but you know, the library's covered in our, our mowing contract um, and it's part of our routine plowing to plow the parking lots um, yeah, at the library but we're not shoveling the library. A new addition to this is uh, the idea of doing an annual inspection uh, where we would go through and kind of review the uh, planned maintenance and status of the building. This will be something we do annually or more often as needed. Then the, one of the big areas of concern is what to do during flooding. So the library is one of our first uh, buildings to receive flood waters in most flood events. Um, you know, the, the village uh, water treatment facility might get it before the library, but they uh, are part of the same kind of water system. So they receive it about the same time. Um, and for town assets, it's definitely the, the first town asset that'll take on water in, in most circumstances. What we've laid out here kind of deals with some of the challenges that we have right now. Um, you know, that we recognize that, you know, that this works uh, kind of under the principle that we recognize this as a very important public asset and we support the library and are gonna do our best to protect the library, but, um, life and human safety is the first priority in an emergency. So to the extent that we're able, we're going to work with the library before uh, an emergency event and to the greatest extent possible during an emergency event. Uh, we will designate somebody in the emergency management team uh, to be the library point of contact so that the library has both communication coming from the emergency management team and from the library as a identified point of contact. Uh, and that will be identified during an emergency. So it's uh, for Beth and Evan who haven't been involved with us in emergency situation before, uh, when we declare an emergency, we, may or may not, it, it depends what's going on, who might be able to make it to uh, where we're convening the emergency management team. So for the most part, we don't designate, an uh, we wouldn't designate an individual for this, we would designate, you know, that this is something that we name the person to do it at the time, or we would designate a couple layers deep uh, of failover so that if the first person uh, can't make it, then, you know, the responsibility, we know who the responsibility falls on. Uh, but having a, a backup system of, of some kind for this.
Uh, and that's really kind of the, the, the document that, you know, the, the big changes are that there will be somebody designated during emergencies to have communication with the library. And um, that we're going to have a regular ongoing uh, maintenance plan and capital improvement plan for the library that will work with the library trustees uh, in overseeing and developing. Well, like I said, uh, I think it's close, uh, but when we have a final version from the trustees, we'll kick it out the full select board and, uh, you know, actually, maybe you ought to share this, Brian, just so that if board members have any uh, huge concern with anything, they can provide some feedback. Sure. And we'll expect probably our next meeting to have a final draft from the trustees and maybe we will approve it. And the intent here is that uh, like it's well right in front of us right now, uh, we would be doing this annually because as you all know, no one board can hold a future board to an agreement. So every new board would have to adopt the same agreement. Okay, any further questions? Um, I just have a statement. Whenever we're putting any documents like this in a, in a compiled file, can we put a watermark on it to show that it's a draft so that anyone looking at it has that context? That's a good sure. idea. Thank you. Okay, uh, I guess we're ready to move on to the planning grant. All right, so next up, uh, LCPC is interested in going out for a, um, a, a EPA Healthy Communities grant. Uh, the grant, we think that our proposal for the grant would be to use it to improve flood modeling and in particular, um, uh, kind of, if you remember, there was, we had a presentation a year or so ago about uh, flood mitigation and you know, that we could use something like Holmes Meadow or a couple other uh, undeveloped sites as uh, kind of preserved flood protection areas so that places like Manchester's might have a little bit more freedom for uh, the kind of redevelopment that they might be able to experience there. If we could guarantee that the flood impact that they made by improvements at Manchester's would be absorbed downstream by something like the Holmes Meadow. Uh, you know, that was, a, that was an option that the town could pursue. Um, the planning grant will get into more detail about that and uh, do more with uh, flood modeling, which hopefully could help us with uh, future planning and predictions. Uh, the grant will be administered by LCPC. I'll be doing some work with them. It does require a 5% match to the funds. Um, the expectation is that uh, that would be offset by in-kind work of uh, my time working with the administrative team on uh, preparing this. Okay, so what are you, you looking for us to uh, I, I We don't have a specific plan written yet. I'm working with Seth on that, but I wanted your approval before I would put any more time into this. Okay. Um, What's the board's pleasure? Just strictly consensus, good enough, Mr. Chairman. If we can all consent, yeah. Consent. Yeah, same deal. Beth? How much time are you talking? What are we talking about for money, for your time? I'm thinking uh, probably 10 to 15 hours. Uh, sure. So it, it's... Now through October 1st. Yeah. Okay. Good return on investment. No, uh, this, this will also, I'm hoping that this can be something that we use uh, 
you know, having talking about those off the shelf plans, if we can, you know, use the, this work on Holmes Meadow as a demonstration of why we need to acquire that property if we have an opportunity in the future with funding. You know, this is a, another piece of evidence that we might be able to use to capture more funds uh, when we have the opportunity. So I think it's a good investment. Okay, Nat, right. you're on board? Yes. Okay, sounds good. All right. Cool. Uh, so moving on, uh, status of the law enforcement study committee. Uh, our two representatives to this intermunicipal committee have both resigned. Um, the committee has a lot of prepared work, but it doesn't look like they're quite ready for, um, you know, to report out uh, that, that they're I haven't heard back from them, so I'm not sure exactly what their status is uh, and where they are with the report, how close they are to being able to submit something. But, uh, you know, it sounds like we might do well uh, to see if we can get a volunteer or two to represent Johnson to help get this over the finish line. Because I know that all the committee members did put in a lot of work. And Beth, uh, Eben, are you familiar with what this committee is? I'm not clear on what their deliverable is or what their mission is in particular. I am very familiar with their reports and um, the structure of the committee. Okay. okay. So the committee was convened. Nat, you had... They haven't given any, sent any reports out. Formally, as I, I think we, we might be confusing. Okay, things. sorry. By reports, I mean I don't mean an official report. I mean minutes. I've read through minutes and looked over documentation that's available. Is what I mean when I say that. Sorry. Apologize. Yeah. Okay. No. Uh, so the the committee was convened uh, based on conversations that we had previously designing the budget with Roger Marcou and as part of the sheriff's department uh, and towns like ours feeling a little bit of uh, heartburn with, with the uh, kind of increases that we were regularly seeing from the sheriff's department um, and the, the needs that he still had, uh, we had kind of come up with the idea with him of let's develop, let, let's get an a intermunicipal committee, committee together to go and look at, um, you know, basically cost analysis of what are the alternatives out there and, and what are the trade-offs for going to other alternatives. We know we'd pay less with uh, if we were contracted with the state police, but uh, the assumption is that the, the, the coverage for the state police would not be as good. But what does it, what does it mean to be not as good? You know, give it a little bit more detail about statements like that. Um, you know, there are some communities that are doing intermunicipal police force agreements and public safety, uh, kind of intermunicipal solutions for that. There's also, uh, you know, there was once a Johnson police department. Uh, you know, so there, there are options out there. What do the different options look like and what is kind of the cost benefit of, of different possible solutions? Um, so that's, that's been their chart. Um, that is, yeah, it sounds like they're close to being able to report, uh, but they need some help getting, kind of collating all the data, proofing it, and, and submitting a final report. Uh, they might do this okay on their own without us sending more people there, but I feel pretty, I, I would feel better if we had representation from Johnson uh, Kind of at the the we were there at the beginning. I'd like to have it through to the end of the the committee's chart as well. It would be nice to know how close they are because if we send somebody there now, they're going to be so far behind the eight ball. Yeah, uh, they'll be they'll be just trying to play catch up, which is part of the problem with that committee with Wolka because they had two new appointees as well that just one or two meetings into it and. Uh, the Johnson reps resigned. 
We never accepted any resignation, any resignations from Johnson reps. I don't believe. No, we have not. No. We've received their letters of res resignation, but we have not actually accepted them. Which we probably should have had that on the agenda for tonight. Yeah, forgot about it. Thank you, Beth. All right. Sure. <laughs> yeah, what are we going to make them go back on if we don't accept it? Yeah, we'll <laughs> deny it. <laughs> Good luck. Go ahead, Matt. I think if we if we don't appoint anyone, we can't. Um, well, I think if, if we don't appoint people to replace the two members from Johnson, I'm not sure that it'll get finished, frankly. Um, I, I think that um, between the new membership, who's really would be starting from scratch in other communities and, and members who um, just aren't that committed to the to the goal, to the uh, to the work, uh, they're kind of floundering, um, and they could use some strong leadership. Are you volunteering? No, I mean, yeah, I'd love to, but I have some pretty strong opinions about it. I think we need people <laughs> that have uh, that have uh, kind of an outsider's perspective. So there, there well, has been. I mean, I've I've collected whatever data they've they've collected. I've tried to to get. So we could just use that data that they've gotten and make some decisions among ourselves. But I mean, we should also be working with the two other contract communities. So yeah, anyway, I think we should try and find somebody to, to step up. So does the board wanna post the openings? And uh, we have one planning commission opening. We would have two openings on this committee. If we went ahead and did some posting try to have some applicants by next meeting? We probably should because uh, we should have some people at the table. That way they would be more interested in sharing with the with Johnson if somebody's there versus if nobody was there at all. Okay, let's go ahead and post for him, Brian. Do we have any other empty uh, uh, positions? We should be posting everything same time i think we're good on committees but we do have uh the energy coordinator and our representative for the solid waste management district okay we should post for them yeah the... what is the expectation for the committee for the sheriff's department committee like it's i understand they're close like i hear those words but what does that mean? If we're introducing new people, does it mean they're actually not close? And will it, and are we okay with that? Like, do they have a deadline? I think the belief is they've got most of the data. It just needs to be put together and summarized into some report. So I am thinking along lines that I'm, I'm thinking along different lines. <laughs> And I'm thinking along those lines because depending on who we appoint, that data may not be sufficient, uh, depending on what we're looking for in an outcome. And, or maybe it is, maybe, I don't know. But I guess I'm just saying, uh, uh, you know, do they have a deadline? I guess is what I'm really just asking. No, no deadline. Okay. And you know, the follow-up question is, should we be talking with those other select boards and trying to define deadlines and figuring out like, can you deliver small things, small pieces, don't conquer the world, give us this piece and have consensus across our select boards so that they can deliver things regularly and it's not this massive task of a big, huge report. Because if we're talking about a police report, it could be massive or, it could not be massive. And, you know, depending on what you're looking for, it may or may not meet what, what the towns are looking for. Um, and lastly, we hear about um, policing in many different realms of our world these days. Um, and do we have proper rep representation and are we seeking out that re proper representation to gather information? I just don't know any of those questions and I, think they're important ones. Uh, Brian, have you had any discussion with Ron 
from Hyde Park? Not recently enough to be useful yeah. for this. Um, so if, if I can offer a suggestion, I think Beth's comments are really valuable. Uh, so what I would, I think setting a deadline is a, a really good one. And what I'd like to see come out of this, I, I'd like to appoint somebody with the express of not going out for new data. Get us the best report with what they have kind of as soon as possible. And then, you know, let's talk about future goals and what more we want out of out of the committee. That the there are larger questions about what are our values, what are our needs, what do we want out of law enforcement. Uh, and that's not really the charge that the committee was started with. So I would be surprised if they're prepared to present even a fraction on a larger question like that. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I'd really like to get something back from them in the short term and then open up to larger questions about, you know, what are our values and what do we want out of law enforcement? Uh, but get what they're, what they have, get into a presentable format uh, as soon as possible. And it could be very arrogant of us to say that, you know, they, that they need Johnson's input in order to get this across the finish line. Uh, they might, they might be really close, but I don't think so. I, I think that they could use the help. Well, it's also a little bit presumptive of us to set a deadline for one town instead of three. Yeah. Yeah, I think setting a deadline, we've got to cooperate with the other town. Um, do we even know who the new chair is? No. Uh, the okay. former chair resigned. Uh, I don't know that the other chair was ever actually elected before she resigned. Uh, but yeah, I do not believe that they have a chair. So we have no channel of communications with this committee at all right now. Uh, not any formal channel, no. Okay. So I think next steps, I'm gonna to talk to uh, uh, Ron and Wilcott and see about if they, what they know about net, about chairs, about who's manning the committee now. And I uh, also post that we've got some vacancies that we're, that we're interested in finding somebody to help finish this report. Um, and then next steps after we, we get this report, uh, yeah. if you're willing. Um, I don't see where we got much choice. We want to be at the table, and right now we don't have anybody at the table. Yeah. In fact, we don't even know where their table is. Yeah, and it's kind of falling apart, too. Yeah. And I know there was a lot of work done, and we would not want all that effort for not. Okay. Kind of started out with a big bang. Big bang. Now it's kind of fizzled out. <laughs> I think it blew up more likely, but um, <laughs> so we'll go forward and look for some uh, possible volunteers. And if you want to reach out to Ron, see if we can establish some contact channel. Yeah, I will. Okay, thanks. And, and Beth, you're okay with kind of that? I didn't like totally sideline your your interest in. Kind of the, no. the bigger question, just nope. I'm good. right now, narrow focus. Nope, I'm good. That's totally fine. Just wanted to understand. Yeah. All right. Uh, next up, uh, discussions of uh, the merger vote by the town and village residents. So at this point, at the town meeting and at the village meeting, uh, the residents of both bodies have voted that we should continue discussions and planning related to a possible merger. 
Um, the article that was voted on is a little bit vague. We're still pretty far from committing to a merger, but uh, you know we've heard from the voters that they're interested in having us continue to pursue and discuss it. Um, right now, the village is down a member and they have a mostly new board. Um, if I can offer a suggestion on this, it would be to um, table it for a little while, maybe put out to the village that uh, we'd like to have the discussion with them when they're ready, uh, but that this is difficult for them to respond to right now. Board comments or thoughts? I think we should meet with them in May and at least talk. Um, I understand they're a young board, but they still signed up for public service. And this is the third year in a row that voters have leaned this way. I think we owe it to the voters to at least talk about what the next steps are with the board of trustees. And they buy the beer. I think it's fair to talk to them about a timeline. Evan, you say they buy the beer? Well, the village should. They have all the stores. Okay. So I guess I'm I have hearing... a bad connection. Yeah. I'm hearing most of what you're saying, but it sounds like maybe you've got a little bit of a delay from us. Can you hear Maybe us now? You can't hear us. I, I can hear you now. Okay. We heard most of what you said, I think. Now right. we seem to have lost him. Hello? So, yep, we can hear you. No, I don't think you can hear us. So do you need a motion to say? Do you need a motion to set that meeting, a meeting up with them next month? Or uh, why don't uh, can we just... the board just ask the chair to reach out to the chair of the trustees and see if we can find a mutual, agreeable time to meet? If Mr. That's Chairman. Fine. Go ahead, Mike. We don't have, have a clue how long it's going to take uh, to fill that board position. Uh, if they don't have an appointment, they'll have a special election and that's going to take time and it will not be May uh, before we meet with them, I'm sure. And that's, that's one reason uh, I'd, I'd like if the board uh, is uh, agreeable to it is, is uh, authorize the chair to reach out to the chair of the trustees and uh, try to work it through with them. Um, as Mike points out, we're not sure what they're going to be doing as far as appointments or a special election or what have you, how long that'll be. Um, you know, quite frankly, there has been a village form of government for over 125 years. So if it takes us a couple of years to get going, it's not really that big an impact. We've heard yeah. the voters, we've heard their wishes, but um, there is no hurry on this. Absolutely right, Eric. So if, if the board is agreeable, let me reach out to, uh, to Will and see if I can set something up. I mean, uh, Essex has been discussing this for 20 years, so and I don't know what they finally resolved this past year. They voted it, it down. They did. Yeah. Well, it's... Uh, okay, so... Uh, so if, I just want to be... Sorry, I just want to comment on that. Because, go ahead, Beth. Um... I understand the point about the uh, village getting their footing. I totally support them getting their footing. Um, but I also wanted to not, it could be easily perceived that we, that individuals or boards drag their feet to prolong having conversations because they don't want it to happen. And I don't want that perception. Um, 
I want to keep things moving. I didn't join a board to let things be stagnant. Um, so I just guess I would just want to make that point. Thanks. It should also be noted it was strictly advisory. We will get to it when we can get to it, I guess. I mean, yeah, we are a full board. We are formed and to best point, like we're ready, I would think. If, if our voters have advised us to do this, not once, but twice now, we're ready to meet and talk about it. If the trustees need more time, then they should let us know. But I don't, I don't think we should delay assuming that they're not ready. Okay, I'll reach out to Will, see what I can set up. Thanks. Uh, well, the Sheriff's Department report, that's just something everybody got by email. Uh, I don't know if there's any discussion on that. Not seeing any. Why don't we, uh, before we go into executive session, loop back to the uh, CUD appointment so uh, the CUD appointments, uh, their annual year runs uh, May first through June or through April thirty first or thirtieth for April April thirtieth. Um, they're given everything that's happening uh, with federal dollars and everything else and uh, an executive committee meeting coming up the first week in May. It's been asked if we could make the appointments for next year uh, for at least our returning members before the end of the their current appointment. Year. Um, so we have, are currently served by uh, Charlotte Reber is our appointee with Doug Moldy and Paul Warden as the alternates. Uh, Doug is not interested in returning this year, but Paul Warden is, and so is Charlotte. So, what's so we'll be seeking question? another alternate, but, uh, or we can seek another alternate, I suppose. Um, but yeah, those two members would like to continue to serve. It's the board's pleasure. A motion. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Seeing none. Can we post that? Go ahead. Can we post that alternate with the other positions we're posting? Yep. If the board wants to, yeah. Good idea. Okay, we'll do that. Any other discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, signify saying aye. 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 Those, those opposed? Congratulations to the two, uh, the EOP for the town. So our emer annual emergency operations plan is coming up. Uh, we're gonna be working to update that. Um, it is not expected to have a lot of changes year over year. Uh, it's mostly updating phone numbers and contacts. We will be taking a little bit closer look um, but if there are any board members who want advanced copies or to review it with us, um, this would be, go ahead and get in touch and I'll make sure that you see an advanced copy. And uh, again, members of the public or anybody else can be invited for any of the review sessions we have. Uh, but this is a, again, it's mostly phone numbers and contact information. Uh, you know, who you might need to get a hold of in an emergency. Yeah, but it's also starting to think through what it means to be part of that emergency command structure. And um, that's a really valuable thing to start thinking about because um, uh, it's a big part of the job and it's not necessarily something that is on somebody's mind when they when they join the select board. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Nat. That that's true. Also, so um, it is being listed on there uh, is a you know pretty important responsibility. Um, 
you know, it can be, we talked a little bit, we were talking about with the library about having, uh, sometimes we have designees where if you're designated for a specific role, you might be the first in that position or the second or the third in that position. Um, and, and this is the document that lays a lot of that out of, you know, who is the public information officer, who is the backup for that, who is the emergency management director, who is the backup for that, uh, and contact points for all of them. Who do we contact for? Uh, there's a lot of child care up there that we have to make sure that we have people informed if we need to open an emergency shelter, who, who is the contact for opening an emergency shelter. Um, is this something that should just be publicly posted on the website? Is there a reason not to? It has a lot of people's phone numbers and contact information of people that um, aren't gotcha. always public. It, and it's also a lot of people's cell phones and personal phone numbers and personal ways of getting in touch with people. Um, okay. So it's it's not exactly protected information. I think that if anybody asked for it as a public document, we would provide it to them. But I think the expectation is is that it's not it's not it, up on the website. It is shared with the the LCPC and the sheriff's department, so they have all the contact info, and they'll reach out if they need to. For I mean, it, it's got everybody in there, all board members, every department head for both the town and village, uh, health officers, constables contact info like brian said it's got everybody who serves in the community in some uh fashion is listed in there probably so it sounds like anybody who's part of that should get an updated copy each time it's updated really uh well the this board has to approve it the select board has to approve it uh the way it's been typically done in the past it was uh Gordy, myself, Meredith, and Brian would sit down and we'd go through it. But there is good reason to have more eyes on it. And uh, but as far as every department head, um, you know, I'm not sure if there's a lot of value in there because they they deal with their own little world and they they know who they deal with. It's it's more of a you know stepping back. Some call comes into Lamoille Sheriff's Department dispatch can take out this book and look up and see who to contact. I gotcha. Okay. I would happily take a copy, but okay. Yeah, I, I think we can provide this board. Um, and again, this is a, a good opportunity to kind of question some of these of that we, we've had quite a few years where we didn't have a lot of turnover. So kind of the expectation is that a lot of people did know who to get a hold of. And, and did have a lot of this information. So for new board members, uh, I don't want to take that for granted. Yep, I don't have it, so please send yeah. Yep, thanks. <laughs> and, and the plan this year is that the emergency management team that we have together for uh, COVID-19 is gonna go through the plan at our next meeting. Some of the folks who uh, are in charge of that process have been doing it for the last 30, 35 years. And occasionally you hear them saying something about retiring in a year or two. And <laughs> the rest of us need to kind of pay attention to that. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, I think that was all you, you just wanted to bring it up, right? Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to, it, it, the, the updated version is, in progress in progress and uh so is there any yeah. further comment from anyone on the board or even in the public before we enter into executive discussion and i anticipate we will go into executive session two times and there will be no action taken from either of those for the rest of the, the meeting no, I, I don't anticipate anything. Okay, seeing no hands up, I would entertain a motion to enter into executive session for the purchase of a new gravel pit. So moved. 
Mr. Chairman, under 1 VSA 313A1. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and second. Any discussion? Is you still on the call? Uh, I don't I've see. got to send him a text and let him know that we're ready for him again. Okay. Do we need to invite yeah. Brian? Yeah, I would uh, suggest the motioner and the seconder would include in that motion uh, inviting Brian and Hugh to join us. Yes. Yep. Okay, any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Join us in executive session at 9.07.